2019, a hundred million customer records were exposed by Capital One because of misconfigured S3 permission. Now, obviously there was a lot of angry customers, but this cost them over $270 million to fix. So it's safe to say now that companies are paying people a lot of money if they have the skill set to automate security checks. Hence why in today's project, you're going to join the Nextwork security team and you're going to build an AWS security scanner that audits S3 buckets and also catches public exposure risk before they become breaches. As always, you can get the entire guide in the description below and you can do this project completely for free with no experience. Let's just get straight into the video. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is open up our terminal. If you're on a Mac, you're just gonna search for your terminal, but if you're on a Windows, you might wanna search for command prompt or PowerShell. I want you to type in this prompt. If you're on a Windows, just don't add the three in here. And we're gonna check what Python version you have. We need Python 3.12 and above because it includes modern security features that we actually need for our scanner to be more reliable. It also has better compatibility with some of the tools that we're gonna be using later on. If you don't have Python installed or you need an updated version, I would recommend just going to the project guide right here and you can go to the Python downloads page and download the latest WIP version just like this. And you'll know that everything is good when you can go back to your terminal, type in this command and hit enter and you see a Python version number that is above Python 3.12. Once Python is installed, we actually need to go ahead and install the AWS CLI to interact with AWS from our terminal. Now here, I'm assuming most people are not gonna have AWS CLI installed. This is the prompt that you can type in if you wanna check. But if you see command not found, that means you don't have AWS CLI installed. And I would again recommend going to the project guide. You can select Mac or Windows here, depending on your operating system. And we're gonna copy this in. I'm just gonna paste it in the terminal, hit enter, and this is gonna download the CLI for us. You'll be required to put in your password here. This is just the password that you use for your laptop. Keep in mind in the terminal, you're not gonna be able to see your password, but it's just assuming that you're typing it. The CLI is going to let us use AWS services without actually clicking through the web console. So we don't need to click into S3, set up an S3 bucket in the console. We can actually do this from the terminal. So if that is successful, you should be able to run this command right here and you should see a version number. It should look something like this. Now we need to configure our AWS credentials so that the CLI can actually talk to AWS. Just quickly so that makes a bit more sense. Your AWS credentials are your access key ID and your secret access key. They authenticate your code to AWS and it's similar to how you would think about a username and a password. So the security scanner that we're building needs to call the AWS API in order to access our bucket data. And instead of clicking buttons in the console, our scanner is gonna do this by sending requests to AWS through the API and then getting data back. Let's keep these credentials secure. We don't wanna commit them or share them anywhere else. So let's go back to our terminal and we can run this command right here, AWS STS get caller identity. And this command uses AWS's security token service to check who you're authenticated as. If your credentials are configured, you're gonna see something here, but if you're not, you're gonna see something like this. So the first thing that you need to do is, of course, if you haven't already created an AWS account, I'd recommend you need to do that for this project. If you don't know how to, I'd recommend doing this project right here where you set up an AWS account. We'll walk you through everything step by step. But once you are, I want you to log in with an IAM user. If you don't know how to do that, I'll show you how to do that now. So once you've created your account, it should look something like this. So we are going to create a IAM user. So right now we're logged in as a root user and the root user has unlimited access to everything in our AWS account. That is powerful, but it's risky for daily work. So instead we're gonna create an IAM user. So I'm gonna type in IAM at the top here and let's go click on that. And we're gonna follow best practices. So from here, you can click on users in the left-hand side. And you can see I already have some IAM users here. We can create a user. You can type in any name here. So something like my access key would be fine. We can skip over this management terminal as we're gonna be in the console and hit next. And we wanna attach policies directly. This lets you choose what permissions the user gets. So we will give it admin access right here. This is gonna give our user full permission across AWS. And that is what we need for building and testing the security scanner. In a real company, you use the rule of least privilege. So you wanna give as little access as possible essentially, but for learning admin access is fine. We can scroll down to the bottom, click next, and then we can create our user. From here, let's click on the one that we just created. We're gonna click on security credentials. And I want you to scroll down to this access key part right here. We're gonna create an access key and we're using this in the CLI. Tick the box there, hit next. For the description tag value, you can say something like development 
access for security scanner and we're going to create the access key so aws is going to show you the access key and then also the secure secret access key this is the only time that we will be able to see that key if you lose it you have to create a new key you can download the csv file or just store it here for a second but we're going to go back to the terminal here and we're going to type in aws configure and of course we're going to be needing our access key id here so i'm going to copy this in paste it in the terminal hit enter and then our secret access key i'm going to copy this as well paste it in the terminal hit enter i'm going to delete these so that you can't get access to them but don't try when i ask for default region name let's just use us east dash one that's the us east virginia region and it's where most services are available so it's a good one to use for by default for us for default output format let's use json this makes aws cli responses easier to read and pass through and now the cli is going to save these values on a hidden file in our computer so our code will read from these files when it needs to authenticate but now we can actually verify that the credentials are working aws sts get caller identity hit enter and if you see something that looks like this beautiful it's worked this is the json output that we want to see notice that my arn shows the user so my access key here that confirms that we're in a iam user and not a root user if you're seeing any issues here again go back to the project guide it's going to run you through any of the issues all right so the next thing we're going to do is open up an ide i'm going to go ahead and use cursor here this is going to give us an organized workspace for our security scanner code i'm going to create a new folder on my desktop and i'm going to name it aws dash security dash guard back into cursor here i'll make this full screen and i open up my project go onto my desktop and just open up this empty folder so now we are going to create a python virtual environment and this is going to isolate this project's packages from the system python so for example without a virtual environment here if you install a python package it installs globally so if you're working on two different projects and one needs bodo 3 version 1.28 meanwhile the other one needs 1.34 you can only have one version installed at a time and that creates a lot of conflict now with virtual environments each project is sandboxed so they don't touch each other and you can install whatever you want inside the virtual environment so for us let's press command j or control j if you're on windows open up the terminal and it automatically starts in the folder that we want it if you're on mac you're going to run this command right here python 3 if you're on windows don't add the 3 and you're just going to go dash m vnv that is going to create your virtual environment in a folder called venv and the dash m part just just means that run the venv module and the second venv is the folder name where python stores all the isolated environment so you will see a folder on the left hand side here and that folder contains a copy of python and space for packages nothing is installed in it yet though so it's an empty sandbox and it's ready for the project's dependencies now we need to actually activate this environment here so i'm on mac i'm going to type in this command here source vim slash bin activate if you're on windows you're going to type in the command that i put on screen right now and that command activates the virtual environment so you should see something like this and that means that everything is working beautifully now essentially any packages that we install will go into this isolated environment instead of our global python so now we need to go ahead and install a package called bodo3 and verify that uv is available and these are the tools that are going to allow us to interact with aws and run the mcp server and if you're wondering what is bodo3 great question bodo3 is the official aws sdk for python and sdk stands for software development kit essentially it's a bridge between your python code and aws services without bodo3 you're going to be managing constructing your HTTP requests, handle authentication, pass JSON requests. It's going to take a lot of time. Bodo3 actually does this all for you. So instead of writing hundreds of lines to list S3 buckets, you can just call something like that, S3 list buckets. And Bodo3 is going to handle your authentication with your credentials. It's going to make the API call to AWS and then return data in a clean format every time. It works with every service and every company is automating AWS using Bodo3. All right, so let's go back to our terminal here and let's run this command pip install botu or boto3 that command uses pip to download the boto3 from python package index and it's going to install it in our virtual environment we got uv sorted so got uv dash dash version you should see it right here uv is a fast python package manager that we're going to use to run the aws mcp server if it says command not found here just check the project guide and it'll run you through the download as well speaking of the project guide let's go back to it here this is how you would download uv but we actually want to just double check that everything has 
has been installed. So let's run this. I'm running it for Mac and I can see that things have been installed. This is the command right here for Windows and we can move on to the next step. All right, so next we're gonna go ahead and create a new Python file called scanner py. This is gonna hold all the code for our security scanner. So in cursor, I'm just gonna go to the left-hand side right here, create a new file. I'm gonna call this scanner.py and that's gonna create an empty Python project file. So when we run python scanner.py, Python is gonna read this file and execute our code inside it line by line. Cool, so now we actually need to write some code and luckily it's been written for us. And essentially what this is gonna do is it's gonna get Bodo 3 to be connected up with S3 and it's gonna set up the loops that check each bucket. So let's go back to the project guide right here and you wanna fill in your service right here. We, this is gonna be S3 for us. Make sure you just type that in and hit enter. Then we're gonna copy this and we're gonna paste it in this file and hit save. And I'll give you the quick version of what this code does. The project guide is gonna go in depth and in more detail. But essentially what we're doing is we load Bodo3 and client error at the top. The Bodo3 client from S3 creates a connection to AWS S3 uh, using our credentials. It calls this function here, list bucket, which hits the AWS API and returns a dictionary with all of our buckets. We then count them, then loop through each bucket name. And then we have our findings here and this list will store any security issues that we find. And then this part right here means it only runs when you execute the file direct. So our scanner can now connect through our S3 bucket and list buckets. And we actually need to check them now for security issues. So what we wanna do now is head back to cursor and we're gonna add code that checks each bucket's public access block configuration. And this is where we're going to detect all of the security vulnerabilities. So S3 has what we call four public access block settings and all four of these must be enabled for the bucket to be secure. So we've got block public ACLs, block public policy, ignore public ACLs and restrict public buckets. If even one of these is disabled, then someone could potentially make this bucket public and then anyone can access it. All right, so we're gonna add in our security logic and we can head to the project guide right here. And if we type in public access block configuration, that is our key config. So we can go ahead and copy this in. We're back to cursor here. We're gonna look at this line right here, line 17. We're gonna go ahead and delete this and we're gonna paste in the code here. Now, one thing you've gotta be careful about is you should see imports at the top, yes, but try and accepts here should be in the same line. So I can just go back a couple times and now things are looking good. Python won't run if the spacing is wrong and that's a little annoying. So make sure that everything is aligned here. Now, you may be wondering what does this code actually do? And that's a great question. First, it's going to get the security settings from AWS from each bucket. Second, it checks if all four protection settings are enabled. And then third, it handles errors so a broken bucket doesn't crash the entire scan. The try block fetches and checks settings and the accept block catches errors and keeps the scanner running. So from here, we need to connect cursor to AWS using the MCP server. Now this is gonna let cursor interact with our AWS account directly through the chat. So MCP stands for model context protocol. And essentially it's just a bridge between cursor and external tools. And in this case, AWS, now the AWS MCP server, that is going to translate our chat requests into actual AWS API calls. So when you ask cursor something like create a bucket, MCP is gonna make it happen using our credentials. So we can go to the top right hand corner of cursor here. We're gonna to go to tools and MCPs. And I've already got a couple enabled here, but I'm gonna create a new MCP here. So I'm just gonna copy this in. I'm then going to add a comma here and paste this in. I can get rid of this right here and this. So it should look something like this and I can delete those last two. Now, if you didn't have any MCPs here, you would just paste this in and it would work. But if you're appending it, you need to get rid of some stuff and clean it up. If you have any issues at all, just ask cursor and it'll help you out. For example, I could just say, make sure that this MCP service JSON is correct. And I could even add the MCP JSON. Yep, it's all valid. And now you can see within cursor settings here, the AWS tool is enabled. You might have to restart cursor if your tool is not showing that it's enabled, but I think this is an update that cursor has made. So it should be good to go. By the way, what this configuration is saying is it's telling cursor to use UV to run the AWS MCP server. And then cursor can essentially execute commands on your behalf. I'm just gonna quit cursor and restart it because Sometimes I've had issues with the MCP configuration. So I'll quit out, I'll open it up again, and let's see it go green. There we go, we're all good. So we can check that UV is running here. I'm just gonna run UV version, and you can see that the UV is running. 
and we can also check that our AWS credentials are working by running AWS ST get caller identity and we can see that it's working so everything is working great so now comes the fun part we're going to use curses ai to deliberately insecure an s3 bucket this is going to give us a security issue to detect so i'm going to open up a command prompt right here i'm going to say create an s3 bucket named test security demo 12345 without any public access block configuration so my security scanner will detect it as a critical issue i'm just going to name this properly so we're going to go test security demo and i'm actually going to change these numbers here just change it to five random digits i'm just going to add an apostrophe to the end so create an s3 bucket named test security demo 18965 you can choose any random five numbers without any public access block configuration so my security scanner will detect it as a critical issue now i can go ahead and press enter and cursor will use the aws mcp which you can see right here and you'll see it planning to create a bucket there we go <laughs> so it created the bucket test security demo 1895 and removed its public access block configuration here's what will happen when we scan try to get the public access block configuration for this bucket receive a no such public access block configuration and flag it as critical. So let's see if it actually does that. So let's spin up a new terminal. You wanna make sure that your virtual environment is all set up and good to go. If you aren't, then I'd recommend just checking the project guide and you just run your activation commands again that we did earlier in the video. And if I'm on Mac, I'm gonna type in python3scanner.py. If I'm on Windows, I'm just gonna get rid of this three. So it's pythonscanner.py. Cool, and I'm gonna hit enter. I'm actually facing an issue here. So I'm gonna copy in this code. Uh, I think it's to do with uh, the object here. So I'm just going to say, please, can you help me fix this issue here? And I'm going to copy in the error. And the reason this happened was because in here where I wrote S3 client, it should actually have apostrophes in it, but I didn't do that. So that's why my code did not work. But I'm going to try run this again. And let's see, found three buckets to scan. Oh my goodness critical so i actually found two issues so i had a warning in here which means partial protection so some settings enabled but not all four but then i had critical which means no protection at all now obviously we want to go ahead and fix these so we can actually use cursor again to go and help us fix these so i'm just going to go up to the chat here remember if you don't know how to access the chat just toggle this ai pane on and off and i'm going to say i just ran my scanner.py and found security issues with my buckets can you help me fix all critical findings by enabling public access blocks on those buckets. Cool, cursor then can do its thing. Cursor is again gonna use the AWS MCP to generate, to check our buckets first, then generate the AWS CLI commands to fix them. It's gonna ask us permission. I'm just gonna have a look what it's doing here. So it's scanning the buckets, it's enabling public access blocks it's created a fix for us and we can just go ahead and say run it now so it seems to be all good here and we can just go ahead and run the same command that we did before and hopefully we should be seeing no issues here there we go scan complete found zero issues let's go so all buckets are properly protected this is actually a cool project because i didn't even know that i had two buckets i'm thankful that that's fixed now but this really does show you the power of cursor mcps and our security scanner document that we've created again if this is your first time using nextwork make sure that you are filling in your documentation as you go through the project because you will get hands-on documentation that you can share to recruiters across linkedin github any of these profiles here and this is the best way to stand out to recruiters you're actually showcasing your skills as always leave a like subscribe and i will see you in the next one peace